Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out 10 shocking food scandals. But no one is testing for traces of other species such as cat, rat or dog. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. And today we're looking at the biggest food and fast food scandals to hit Britain. There are now this 273 confirmed cases in the UK. 17 new cases today. Foot and mouth. KFC runs out of chicken. Back in 2018, <laughs> the nation was blighted by a lack of bargain buckets at KFC. Oh, Hundreds no. of branches up and down the country were struck by a shortage of chicken, <laughs> all because KFC had changed its delivery company to DHL. What are we going to do? The chicken shortage, which has forced KFC to close hundreds of its outlets in the UK, is oh, our next well, story. DHL just couldn't handle the complex logistics of delivering chicken to KFCs up and down the country from one warehouse and eventually the chain had to revert to its old firm. Uh, and the contract changed last week. They had months to plan for it, and the chicken is stuck in the warehouse. Thankfully, wow. nobody died as a result of the chicken shortage, because all human beings can go more than one week without fried chicken. <laughs> but it was still a major, if bizarre, issue at the time. Well, I'll get a free rice box then, coming down, because I've been trapped. I've, I've had to go to Burger King. I've had to go to Burger King, so give me something for free. At first, I thought this was hilarious, like this is not a scandal, but then when they said they had to close some locations, that does get serious because then you're, you know, people need to work, people need the money. That could take down a town, maybe. I've had to go to Burger King. 1996 <laughs> E. coli outbreak. This is still the deadliest outbreak of E. coli the UK has ever seen leading to 21 deaths in 1996. Mm. Nearly 500 people across Scotland were affected because a butcher, John Barr, wasn't registered properly and therefore not inspected. Investigators also ah. said that Barr continually lied to them while the source of the outbreak was being investigated, which meant more contaminated meat was sold and more people were affected. It was that largely the elderly who died from the illness with many families in Lanarkshire struck by the tragedy, and all because existing regulations weren't followed. The only silver lining is that the UK has had no other E. coli outbreak this deadly in the years since. Rotten pork. What? Multiple oh. supermarkets this deadly. All because of one guy. The lining is that the UK because exists. What's his name? With so this guy didn't register himself as a butcher, so the authorities didn't know to inspect him. John Barr. The butcher who lied. E. coli is serious. That's a serious sickness. Most types of E. coli are harmless and even help keep your digestive tract healthy, but some strains can cause diarrhea if you eat contaminated food or drink found in water. You can also get pneumonia from E. coli and urinary tract infections, abdominal cramps, vomiting, and bloody diarrhea. Acute kidney failure in children, adult kidney failure, confusion, seizures. That sounds horrible. Ugh. Horrible. Rotten pork. Multiple supermarkets and fast Ugh. food chains were affected by this issue in early 2023, when a supplier was able to sell rotten pork to them. The supplier was never named, but outlet Farmers Weekly, which conducted the investigation, said that until 2020, a, quote, top food manufacturer had been flogging rotten meat. The issue was so widespread that there's a good chance you may have eaten rotten meat if you lived in the UK at the time and oh, weren't a vegetarian. God. Luckily, it doesn't seem like any disease outbreak happened as a result of this. The chaos over Brexit and the pandemic has been blamed by some on standards being briefly relaxed, though the FSA now wants even tighter regulations. The thought of rotten pork is really disgusting. For years? It seems like you could smell that pork was rotten, right? Farmers Weekly revealed that one of the country's top food manufacturers was selling f falsely labeled foreign meats as British and sometimes peddled rotten meat to retailers. And they won't tell you who it is. It's a big enough company that the government doesn't want them to fail. Who are the biggest food suppliers? It might be Nestle, Pepsi, Diageo, Kraft, Coca-Cola, Mars, Danone, Mandalay International. It's probably one of them. I don't think Nestle sells pork. Pepsi doesn't sell pork. Kraft doesn't sell pork. Coca-Cola doesn't sell pork. Mars doesn't sell pork. So it's probably Diageo, Danone, 
or Mandalay International. Bet it's one of them. That's horrible. And it's kind of horrible that we don't know who it was. They should be held accountable. They had bad intentions. You know, bacon lovers love that bacon. Food waste. Each year, hundreds of thousands of tons of food are sent to landfill in the UK by major supermarkets. This is not mm. food that the supermarket simply didn't manage to sell in time. In fact, this is food that didn't make it onto the shelves in the first place. Get Investigations away. have shown time and time again that supermarkets just aren't doing enough to combat this problem, which is a major environmental issue. In 2021, less than 9% of supermarkets' extra food was donated to food banks at a time when the public is becoming more and more reliant on them. Is that we believe that is just over 1% of the in-date, fit-for-human-consumption food that could be passed to organisations like us and be fed to people in need. We could be feeding millions of people each year, with more and more otherwise going hungry during the cost-of-living crisis. Yeah. Instead, all this food, much of it still good to eat, is being thrown away and left to rot. I don't think that's just a UK problem. I think that's a worldwide problem. I know, I'm sure in the US, we waste a lot more. 30% of food in America grocery stores is thrown away. U.S. retail stores generate about 16 billion pounds of food waste every year. <laughs> we got your beat on the food waste, Britain. Don't feel bad. Shortages. While in many ways, UK supermarkets have such an abundance of food that they send it to landfill, in others, they're not able to keep stock on the shelves. But mm. campaigners say money is being lost in overly complex supply chains where too many people take a slice along the way. It seems that nowadays there are constant shortages of vital products, including meat, fruit and vegetables. A lot of people have blamed Brexit for this, with international trading becoming harder following the UK's departure from the EU, though others have pointed out that shortages happened before Brexit too. Part of the problem there is that it's quite a fragmented industry and it isn't able to command the price that it needs to be able to command to be able to continue to produce and that's why... But the mm. UK's policy on supermarkets and food contracts have also been blamed as it can be difficult for supermarkets to change suppliers to get what they need. One of the benefits of Brexit was supposed to be cheaper food and yet here we are. Whatever the cause, it doesn't yeah, look yeah. like there's going to be a solution anytime soon. So I guess it's just in some parts of the country, right? In a way, it makes sense. I mean, how do you get fresh fruit in the winter in Britain? It's got to be shipped in, right? From another country, right? Or grown in a greenhouse, maybe. I can see how there's a lot of ins and outs with the network resourcing with all of that. Different vegetables and fruits and, yeah, that seems complicated. pret a manger allergies. Every time you choose food, Yes. publicly available, yes. commercially available, you are making a life or death decision. Absolutely. I think that's one of the things that yeah. this story has highlighted yes. for people. In 2016, a 15-year-old girl very tragically passed away after eating a sandwich from Pret-a-Manger containing ingredients she was allergic to. The girl, Natasha, had many severe allergies and her parents meticulously checked the packaging of the baguette oh. before she ate it but it contained an allergen that wasn't listed on the packet, which led to her death from anaphylaxis. So there uh, was information on this wrapper? There was information, but confusing information. Right. Her parents campaigned for years to have a new law introduced, and in 2021, it was, requiring yeah. all fresh food made on a shop or restaurant's premises to have a full ingredient. Excellent. But Brett don't claim that there was any mention of sesame either on the label no. or on That's the sticker. Absolutely the point correct. is they accept. Hopefully, an avoidable tragedy like this won't happen again. Wow, that's a horrible story. I think this actually happens a lot. Those poor parents. They kept her going for 15 years. I mean, that's pretty good. Oh, those poor parents. I think they did a good job, though. I think they got this law enacted, and now other people won't die. At least something good came out of it. Foot and mouth outbreak. There's growing opposition Gross. in the parts of the country worst affected by foot and mouth disease to the new government plans for mass slaughter of healthy animals. The UK has had many outbreaks of foot and mouth disease over the years, What's notably that? in 1967 and 2007. But those outbreaks were both small compared to the devastating contagion that spread through the country's livestock in 2001. 
I don't like, I repeat, I don't like any of this, but I recognise that we have to eradicate the disease and this means hard measures. There were 2,000 reported cases of the disease, but foot and mouth has to be contained by widespread culling, which led to the slaughter of 6 million animals. The crisis was so serious that it affected not just the UK's food and agricultural industries, but also tourism, because so much of the countryside was locked off to contain the disease's spread. Oh my they say that up to now, when infections have been discovered, it's taking several days to deal with it, to slaughter herds, to dispose of the bodies. You may remember seeing the horrific images of livestock burning on television at the oh, time. What is foot and mouth? Foot and mouth disease? Mm. It's an infectious and sometimes fatal viral disease that affects cloven-hoofed animals and wild bovids. Cows. The virus causes a high fever lasting two to six days, followed by blisters inside the mouth and near the hoof that may rupture and cause lameness. Gross. Poor animals. They didn't ask for that. Bernard Matthews. I spent most of my life turkey farming up here in Norfolk. I'm Bernard Matthews, and this little booty is the Matthews one and a quarter pound turkey roast. This poultry producer became the epicenter of a bird flu outbreak in 2007. Oh. Specifically, it was the H5N1 strain of influenza, which was one of the rare types of avian flu that can affect humans, in some cases, severely. More culling was undertaken to prevent it from spreading to other farms, since wild birds can easily spread bird flu between flocks. It turned out that the outbreak was largely because of regulations not being followed. But that Again. doesn't mean the virus can spread between people, at least not yet. No humans contracted bird flu in this incident, but the damage to the company's reputation was severe, to the tune of tens of millions of pounds. Even today, it's hard to hear the name Bernard Matthews without thinking of bird flu. What's Bernard Matthews doing now? How much of their story is this? It occurred in Holton, Suffolk. A range of precautions were instituted, including a large cull of turkeys, the imposition of segregation zones, and a disinfection program for the plant. Though the cause of the outbreak has not been determined, Bernard Matthews regularly transported turkeys and turkey products between the UK and its plant in Hungary, and the H5N1 bird flu strains found in Hungary and Britain were effectively genetically identical. So it came from Hungary. It didn't come from Turkey. It came from Turkey, but it came from Hungary from Turkey. Are you hungry for Turkey? What are the chances that these words are happening? People lost their jobs. And I'm sure they had to dispose of all these birds. Horse meat. British Ooh. firms have been told to test all their processed beef products for traces of horse meat or pork within a week. In many parts of the world, what? eating horse meat isn't taboo at all. Not so in the UK, which was hit hard by the 2013 horse meat scandal that affected all of Europe. Though Gross. large numbers of people were appalled at the idea of eating horse in the first place, they didn't the know real issue was that the supply chain had clearly fallen apart, as the horse meat hadn't been declared. It was safe to eat, thankfully, but it should never have been in the products it was found in, notably beef lasagnas and burgers sold by Tesco and Findus. Oh. Tests carried out in Ireland found horse DNA in a number of big brand name beef products. Oh my God. One, a Tesco value beef burger, contained as much as 29% horse meat. Whoa. Another issue was that many of the beef samples tested also contained pork, which would make them unfit for certain demographics to eat at all. Yeah. Fit has built a trusted Jewish? brand over generations, and it will take a long time to win back consumer confidence. This scandal will do great damage to the meat processing industry as a whole. Wow, they were feeding people horse meat without them knowing. And they were putting pork in what they were calling beef? Wow. Some people live their lives trying to not eat pork, and they were probably eating it every day. That's horrible. And horse meat, I mean, I guess it's not that much different from cow meat. I mean, morally, but the thought of it is just gross. <laughs> because when I think of horse meat, I think of like, uh, a cowboy who's down on his luck. He's starving out in the desert, so he has to eat his horse. Or, I don't know, why is horse meat so gross? I guess because I think of horses like a domesticated pet, like a dog or a cat, maybe, that's why? And I guess they seem kind of smart. Maybe that's why? I don't know. How does horse meat end up in, in that anyway, if it's not normal to eat? 
Did they know they were in, like who, did they know? Did they know they were doing this? Someone had to have known, and they just had the horse meat because it was cheaper, and so they put it in with the beef, right? Did they ever find out who was doing, like why? Of 27 beef burger products tested, 37% were positive for horse DNA and 85% were positive for pig DNA. Laboratory DNA investigations were requested by authorities into possible donkey meat. Now that's even grosser. Donkey meat. ABP Food Group had been accused of supplying adulterated meat. Okay, so it was this one company, ABP, and they had some subsidiary companies. Oh, it was even in beef bolognese sauce. Y'all, <laughs> if you lived in Britain in 2013 and you're a meat eater, you probably had some horse. And if you're a Jewish person, you probably had some pork. Burger King? Oh, Burger King dropped them as a supplier, so it was probably in the Burger King burgers? ABP? What are y'all doing? Mad cow disease. In the mid-1980s, a previously unknown disease began appearing in cattle in the UK with a 100% mortality rate, diagnosed as BSE two years later. This went on for a decade before it became clear that the disease was able to affect humans, with contaminated mm. meat being given not only to people, but also to zoos and other farms across the country. Oh. Because of the long period of inaction, the disease was able to spread around the world, and it was only after a long culling effort was undertaken that it was able to get under control. Over 4 million animals were slaughtered in the UK, and hundreds of people around the world have died as a result. Mad cow disease. I remember hearing something about mad cow disease saying that it comes from cows eating cows. Four cases were reported globally in 2017, and the condition is considered to be nearly eradicated. Oh, this cow has it. Oh, it makes him stand weird. Oh, that sounds horrible. These poor cattle. A ban on feeding meat and bone meal to cattle has resulted in a strong reduction in cases in countries where the disease has been present. present. So I don't know if it's caused by cows eating cows, but it's definitely spread by cows eating cows with mad cow disease. How many times can I say the word cow? If mad cow disease isn't taken care of, that could totally wipe out every cow. And a lot of people. Those were 10 shocking food scandals. Wow. Yeah. Disgusting. Ugh. You never know when it's going to hit. Really interesting video. Thank you all for recommending. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time. Later.